Well, I guess a waste of time, that's a harsh statement because it's not a waste of time because it erases awareness. I mean, like having a shower restrictor and so forth. In terms of absolute sense, it's a total waste of time. But in terms of reminding people that it's a good idea to be conscious of these things and also then basically being more tolerant towards giving up certain, ha certain luxuries and so forth to overcome the problem. So psychologically, it's not a waste of time, but actually in hard reality, it is a waste of time. And it would be much better. I recently was at a uh, meeting put on by the Royal Society advising the UK government on what they should do. And, you know, even in a country like the UK, which is relatively small, I mean, climate change is already having a major impact. But it's much broader than what most people think. I mean, it's not just water, sea level rise, but the implications of it, the immigration patterns, diseases, the flooding uh, issues. The, the flooding themselves are not such a big issue, but the disease that comes with the flooding. And then the psychological stress. I mean, if you now look at all the stress uh, figures in the world, uh, suicide rate among young people are going up and so forth. So it's, it's a very complicated issue. And unfortunately, climate change and cultural change are all coming together at the same time. And we, we've gotten rid of institutions like uh, marriage, church, etc. And there's a wonderful book by the uh, Anglican Archbishop, Lost Icons, which points this out. And we're not replacing it with anything. So what you have now in Australia, for instance, we had a fairly high suicide. We have a high suicide generally, but during before the depression and during the depression, um, it shifted from 70-year-old people killing themselves to 50-year-old in the depression. During the war, it went down to nothing. Uh, then after the war, it's now shifted to 15-year-old, 20-year-olds, and and I think when you now superimpose on this, this major challenge that climate change is going to bring with it. You can react in two ways in the US and Australia and so forth, they're reacting by paranoia. Uh, I mean, the amount of money we now spend on the justice system, on terrorism and on the military is going up astronomically. If you take the UK budget uh, for total climate research, fundamental research and environmental research, it's a roughly equivalent to two Euro fighters and yet you've ordered 230 Euro fighters, uh, and then Germany, I think, ordered 300 and so forth. And then you ask yourself the question, what am I going to use this airplane with? There's only one other airplane that can compete against if it's a Euro fighter. So obviously Europe's going to go to war. I mean, it's so absurd, the resources. And what I'm suggesting is that all the military input and all that thing should be shifted across to set up task force that can react to these disasters that are going to happen, not just in your own country, but in other countries. Then the next major issue is this consumption issue, that the symptoms of an addict are basically paranoia, denial, illusion, and so forth. If you take paranoia, I mean, Western society is paranoid. I mean, we're spending huge sums of money from the fear from each other. We're in denial stage. I mean, if you go to a business forum or something like that, there'd be many people there saying that, sure, we have climate change, but it's not anthropogenic, you know. Whereas, you know, you can clearly show that it's anthropogenic. I mean, first of all, the CO2 in the atmosphere, you can use chemical analysis to show it is. And secondly, then they say, well, but water vapor is a much bigger component. Well, I, you know, you can clearly show that the little bit of trigger from the CO2 triggers more water vapor. There's a wonderful recent paper on the radiation coming back from this, which is very clear. But to win that is, is very difficult. And then the second thing, which is human nature, we'll fix it. You know, let's just f challenge it, let's fix it. But then if hurricanes and other things have taken over, well, you can't fix it. So we're now in a situation where, as these patterns change, Agriculture will have to change, and agriculture is already a huge issue from land use and so forth. So the areas which were like, if you take the uh, rainforest in, in South America, the soil moisture in that's going to decrease by 50 millimeters per year. Well, that really means that that whole ecosystem is going to be wiped out in the next 30 years. Where it's going to rain more, traditionally, that would have reestablished itself and so forth. But of course, we don't have enough time for that. The other thing of it that's happened is that the nature reserves that where the biodiversity re is retained in the world are actually now bounded. So in Australia we have a good set of national parks and so forth, but you have one fire going through that now, 
and that whole biosystem is gone. Migrating through the boundary is no longer is there. The possibility is not there because there are farms there and so forth. Now superimpose on that changing climates, so most of your rainforests are not going to be chopped down. They're going to basically disappear because the rain patterns are changing. So the challenges are enormous. 